Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today, we are revisiting our king. I had so many requests to go back and talk about um, the book in terms of what, it, you know, with the William and Catherine of it all. Of course, just to refresh your memory, I went through the Harold and Fraud of it all. And this book is told from the point of view of Charles. So I thought, you know what? Well, it's an exciting week waiting for coronation and we're so excited to go over there. I thought, you know what? Let's go back and explore um, some of the William and Catherine from the book. And I'm very excited to talk about it. And so to do this, I thought, let's put up old pictures of William and Catherine through their friendship, dating ship, their relationship, their marriage, all that. So enjoy the background pictures and we'll talk about our king. So if you are Reading along with me, our king, of course, Robert Jobson, I'm on chapter 15, New Beginnings. Now, a fun thing about this book is each chapter starts with a quote from Charles. So this one starts with, quote, I'm thrilled. They've been practicing long enough. It makes me feel old. It was remarked by Charles to the press when asked about his reaction to William and Catherine's engagement. This was November 2010. Can I just say, look how cute and young and everything and in love they look in all this these pictures. I, I think it's so fun to see. I really do. It's kind of a breath of fresh air, right, to take a break from from Harry and Meghan and to find these pictures and, and just, you know, look back at this time. It's, it's pretty fun to put together and fun to see. Okay, so the chapter starts out with, it's William's graduation. So, of course, as you know, he went to St. Andrews and he was a geography student. So that's something I didn't realize. I think it's cool that he apparently studied geography. So... He was called to the stage, and it says that Charles, Camilla, and the Queen and Prince Philip were there to watch on. He says he thoroughly enjoyed his time at St. Andrews and shall be very sad to leave. He says a big thank you to everyone who made his time there so enjoyable. It was a statement issued by the pre the palace press officer on his graduation day. So his graduation day was the 23rd of June, 2005. So he got, uh, so I guess the degrees there are different. And so it says two colon one in geography added significantly. I have been able to lead as normal a, li a student life as I could have hoped for. And I'm very grateful to everyone, particularly the locals who have helped make this happen. What, I mean, I, you know, I love me some William. And I just thought that was just such a nice down to earth thing to say. I really do. I think that's so cool that he did that. And then he thanked the locals for making that happen. As he was able to enjoy a normal student life, the prince had also been able to fall in love and live with a beautiful young woman who would later become his wife. So seated five rows in front of William, graduated uh, 80 people ahead of him was Catherine Elizabeth Middleton. She was wearing high heels, a black skirt above her knee, and a white blouse beneath her black gown. Catherine had an aura about her. I love the way that Jobson describes it. I feel the same way. I can't wait to see her aura at coronation. Coronation. <laughs> aura, car. aura at coronation. Um, Let's see. It says, when she was called to the stage to be capped with a red and black hood by the vice chancellor, she had collected her two colon one degree certificate in art history. She caught William's eye. She, she flashed him a broad smile as she returned to her seat. He could not take his eyes off her. I love it. So William goes on to say, today is a very special day. This was a statement after the graduation ceremony. I'm delighted I can share with my family, particularly my grandmother, who's made such an effort to come, having been under the weather. He then introduced Ka Catherine's parents, Michael and Carol, to his father, as well as the Queen and Duke of Edinburgh. I didn't know that's the first time they met. I think that's just such a cool detail. So before they, the graduates disbanded along North Street into St. Salvador's quad to meet up with their proud families, degree certificates in hand, they were addressed by Dr. Brian Lang, the vice chancellor of St. Andrews, who said, you will always have made lifelong friends. I say this every year to all the new graduates, you have met your husband or your wife. 
Our title as the, quote, <laughs> top matchmaking university in Britain signifies so much that is good at St. Andrews. So we can rely on you to go forth and multiply. I, that's so cute. I love it. I love that that's where they met. Dr. Lang's words were met with laughter, of course, but there must have been a few couples in the auditorium that day who prickled slightly at his words and wondered if they referred to them. Perhaps William and Catherine were among them. She had become an integral part of William's life ever since she caught his eye romantically when she strutted down a catwalk wearing a transparent dress. P.S. I love that. I love that she did that. I I love everything about her. But yeah, I've seen those pictures a million times. She she walked down in the dress where you could see what was happening underneath. And it sounds like he took notice. Um, it was a student charity fashion show that she did that. So they soon realized that they shared the same interests and started spending more time together as their relationship blossomed. She played a key role in William overcoming his wobble in 2002 and changing courses after he considered quitting university. See, I didn't know about that. I didn't realize that he had wobbled and considered quitting. William later admitted that he had been daunted by the university experience. He discussed the matter with his father, spelling out his desire to abandon the four-year course altogether. Charles, who had become a much better listener to both of his son's concerns since Diana's death, was sympathetic at first, but understandably concerned about the wider implications. He asked his private office to devise a strategy that would enable William to withdraw from university should it prove necessary, but they were concerned about the fallout in the media that would follow. It was only then that Charles strongly advised his son to, quote, stick with it, as first-term insecurities were normal, and it took most students going to university some time to settle in. It was solid fatherly advice that William mulled over before deciding he had to go back. He later conceded that there had been a problem, and again, his father was a big help. We chatted a lot, and in the and we both realized, and then he says, I definitely realized that I had to come back. I found that so interesting. I I actually, again, I think it humanizes him. It's, I really, truthfully, I know, you know, some basics about William, but I really don't know a ton about William. So it's interesting to hear that he, like so many people of that age, you know, you're finding your footing, right? So he struggled a little bit. It sounds like he switched from a major in art history, and he went to major in geography. Um, after doing that, he started to feel happier and more confident, and that's when his relationship with Catherine began to flourish. With the privacy they enjoyed due to the deal that Charles had struck with the media through the Press Complaints Commission. So they had both enjoyed relative freedom from the press, it sounds like, as undergraduates, but they knew that their lives were about to change dramatically after graduation. Not least because the privacy deal expired once William um, finished full-time education. They had been through some rocky patches during their student relationship, but the trials that lay ahead would test their commitment to each other according to Robert Jobson, to the limit. So in 2006, along with her family, Catherine watched William graduate from Sandhurst Military Academy after completing his 44-week training course. And he commissioned, he was commissioned, sorry, as an army officer in the Household Cavalries, it says Blues and Royals. The couple then split briefly in 2007, before reuniting several weeks later. Now, I remember hearing about this, and I remember, I can't remember which book it was, that William basically explained to Harry when he was trying to talk him out of marrying, you know, the sea hag, uh, trying to, he was trying to talk some sense into his brother, and he explained something like, uh, you know, Catherine and I went through it. We had to break up for a little bit to make sure that we were the one, and, you know, it's, and it worked out. So he was, maybe encouraging Harry to do the same. Of course, Harry won't learn anything from anyone and thinks everybody's taking a dig at him or Megan and takes it all so personally instead of using it as a learning opportunity. Anyway, so it's just interesting to hear this. So they reunited a few weeks later. And so Catherine was with him again as he received his wings from Charles as a gradu at a graduation ceremony at the RAF Cranwell. After he had spent four months learning to fly um, these different kind of helicopters, 
So it seemed, however, that her career had been on hold for him. She was unfairly dubbed, quote, weighty Katie in the media since she had been waiting so long for a marriage proposal. I hate that. That sucks. I, you know, I remember hearing weighty Katie, but again, you know, in America, it just didn't really, I didn't really register it. And so now since getting so invested in all this and learning so much more and then seeing how the paparazzi were awful to her, and then they even took out that bus ad that said, Weighty Katie, oh, it's heartbreaking. It's hard to watch. It really does. You see her crying and asking them to stop and they don't. And it's, oh, it really does. It's heartbreaking to see. And so again, I mean, this is my side. I, I think about stupid Megan in one of her interviews, God, see, I get them all confused. Was it the Oprah interview? I think it was the Oprah interview. She said something like, so Catherine got called weighty Katie, and I'm sure that was hard, but you know what I mean? Like she had to belittle the experience. No, bitch. We've seen, we've seen the, we've seen the tapes. Catherine was chased and harassed in a way you never were. So no, I don't think you get to downplay her experience. I just, uh, anyway. Okay. Um, so when the time came, they were both 28 years old and his proposal was truly romantic. Okay. So they went to a remote spot beside a lake, a uh, shimmering Lake Alice in Kenya against the backdrop of snowy Mount Kenya during a private break in late October, 2010. William got on one knee and presented his bride to be with a sapphire diamond engagement ring that belonged to Diana. William initially even kept his big news from the queen and his father as he and Catherine excitedly made their secret plans for a future together. So it was the 15th of November. He, he ended up calling the queen and telling her the good news. She was delighted. Charles too was so happy. Although the Prince of Wales public. So of course at the time talking about Charles, former Prince of Wales, um, Let's see. Although Charles's public reaction that his son and future daughter-in-law had, quote, practiced long enough was a classic illustration of his whimsical sense of humor. So let's see. Later on the 23rd of November, the palace announced that the wedding would take place on Friday, the 29th of April, 2011 at Westminster Abbey. Jobson points out that this was significant because... This is kind of a, I thought it was kind of a cold way to put it, but he explains at last it was something to eclipse the tragedy that, you know, of what happened with Diana. So the couple seemed unflappable as they delivered their vows to each other and William placed the band of Welsh gold on Catherine's finger. The queen concurred. I just, I love, oh God, I woke up early that day to watch it on TV. I love it. I love the wedding ceremony. I love the way the queen was with them, I thought that's a really cool moment in history to witness. And they just celebrated their 12th year anniversary. I made a video about that. In case you missed it, go back and watch that. But uh, I love this couple so much. So this was a neat detail that Robert Jobson points out. Apparently when they were climbing into their, um, what, what is it, their, was it the carriage? No, it may have been the fancy car that they took, um, you know, as part of the the wedding. She, Catherine asked William, are you happy? And William said, it was amazing, amazing. And then he says, I'm so proud you're my wife. And I just love that detail so much. And Jobson says they were totally at one with each other and represented a young, fresh reboot for the institution of the monarchy. So then the next day, the newlyweds dressed casually and ended up flying away in a helicopter for a very quick break. So it turns out their honeymoon was actually put on hold because William had to return to the RAF duties as a search and rescue pilot only a few days later. The couple sent a message of thanks to the nation for their support on the, quote, most wonderful day of our lives. And the new Duchess of Cambridge said with Char characteristic humility, quote, I'm glad the weather held off. We had such a great day. I love that. I think that's uh, so wonderful. I love hearing these details like this that I didn't know. I love hearing, you know, about the intimate moments. That's, that's super cool. So I'm going to end it here. I am loving this. I, I hope you can hear the happiness in my voice as I talk about them. But, um, 
I'm going to end it here, but I'm going to keep going because I really enjoyed this part and I hope you did too. I hope you are having the best week. And again, I'm just so excited to go to coronation. So definitely check back lots because I'll have footage of that once I get there and get my bearings. So <laughs> can't wait to see what's going on there and show it all to you guys. I'll carry you with me. Um, as always, thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting. If you want to further support, we do have merch available. Recollections may vary. Make it make sense in a world of Megan's being Catherine. We have that. Um, what else? We have Patreon, patreon.com slash Real Housewives Recaps. That's where we do bonus content, deep dive, stuff like that. We just started like a community post so we can like talk to each other in there. It's just a really fun group. So if you're into that and you want more content, I do encourage you to check out patreon.com. But as always, thank you so much for being here. Patreon.com slash Real Housewives Recaps. That's where you can become an executive producer and get your shout out. Speaking of which, I'm going to shout out my executive producers now. So a huge thank you to Linda Thank you, Melissa. Thank you to Paige. Huge thank you to Teresa. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Mr. K. Thank you, K. Thank you, Shauna. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Aaron and Frank. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Ann M. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Ann H. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Glennis. Thank you, Karen. Thank you to Dewey. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Adair Becker. Thank you to Erica. Thank you, Amber. Thank you, Annette. Thank you, Barb G. Thank you to Diana. Thank you, Allison B. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Lori. Thank you to Pauline. Thank you to KT. Thank you, Jolene. Thank you, Stromboli. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Loie. Thank you, Lucy H. Thank you to Georgia. Thank you, Susie. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Robin's Landing. Thank you to Helen. Thank you to Mara. Thank you, Ashley C. Thank you to Molly. Thank you, Amber. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Sand Squid. Thank you to Rach. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Dee Dee. Thank you, Nina. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Penny. Thank you, Dombey. Thank you, Android P. Thank you to Sheena. Thank you, Aaron M. Thank you, Faye. Thank you, Judith. Thank you, Spectrum Mom. Thank you, Vanessa B. Thank you, Christy. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Mimi Heathcote. Thank you, Misty. Thank you, Luna. Thank you, Candy. Wow.